Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Hadia. This is me, Hania Raswan. Today our topic is about the overview on the heart. Heart is basically our main pumping organ. It is located in our mediastinal cavity. Heart is positioned from second to fifth rib, but in some animal like dog and cats, is positioned from seventh rib. Heart provides zero point seventy five percent weight as compared to our body weight. Heart produces four type of atrial sound, which are S one, S two, and S three four. In some species of horses, in all the sounds are audible. But in all domestic animals, only S one and S two are audible. So further moving on to the coverings of uh, heart. So the covering of heart is called pericardium. Pericardium is further divided into two uh, coverings. The outer covering is called fibrous pericardium, and the inner one is called serous pericardium. So the question arises: Why fibrous? Why fibrous cardium is called fibrous pericardium? It is because of the presence of fibrous fibers in there. So the serous pericardium is also divided into further two coverings. parietal pericardium and the visceral pericardium so visceral pericardium gives shiny appearance and parietal and visceral are combinedly called epicardium it has two parts the base and the apex base is origination of vessels like pulmonary trunk brachiocephalic trunk and aorta and apex is conical like appearance which is tilted towards 45 degrees in most of the animals heart has two types of surfaces the auricular surface and the atrial surface The, re- the reason we call the left surface is the auricular surface because it has the left and right auricular cores, which are the fetal remnant. And the reason we call the right surface is the atrial surface because it has the left and right atria. Borders: the cranial border and the caudal border. The cranial border is formed by the right ventricle, and the caudal border is formed by the left ventricle. So, for the interventricular grooves, I am going to explain three interventricular grooves: right interventricular groove, left interventricular groove, and and the intermediate groove. So the right interventricular groove is also called uh, called subsynosal groove. Left interventricular groove is also called paraconal groove because of the presence of paraconal artery. And the, अच्छा uh, par- paraconal grooves moves up to apex. And this is the subsynosal groove. And the po- in the posterior side of heart we have this intermediate groove. Coronary groove is a circular groove on the base of the heart which separates the atrium and the ventricles. The coronary groove has also a coronary sinus which drains the blood from the myocardium and sends it to the right atrium. So now for the right surface of heart, in the right surface of heart we have two chambers, right atrium and right ventricle. So right atrium and right ventricle are divided by the help of tricuspid valve. This is tricuspid valve. So the question arises why is it called tricuspid valve just because of the presence of three cusps. So First cusp is called septal cusp. The second one is called parietal cusp, and the third one is called angular cusp. This is totally visible that this is tricuspid valve. So in right atrium we have coronary sinus. So what is the function of coronary sinus? Coronary sinus helps us in the drainage of heart, and it carries the venous blood from myocardium. Then in right ventricle we have uh, caudate tendine, which helps in strong contractions of heart. Then we have papillary muscles, which are attached to caudate tendine, and In right ventricle, we have also some uh, irregular ridges, which are called uh, trabeculae cornea. So, as I've also explained about the tricuspid valve, so this is the visual representation of tricuspid valve. As I've told earlier, the tricuspid valve has three cusps. So, these are three cusps. One is this, the second one is this, and the third one is this. This is called septal cusp. This is called parietal cusp, and this is called angular cusp. So, uh, these three cusps of tricuspid valve are arranged in this position. This is the left surface of the heart, which is called the auricular surface. The reason it's called the auricular surface because it has the auricular cores, which is the left and right auricular cores, which are the fetal remnant. In the left surface, we have two ventricles separated by the left interventricular groove, which is also called the parietal groove. These are two. The difference between these two ventricles is that the left ventricle makes the apex, while the right ventricle doesn't make the apex. In the left interventricular groove, you can also see the tri bicuspid vein. This one is a septal cusp and this one is a parietal cusp. These cusps are attached to the papillary muscle with the help of the caudate tendine. Papillary muscle does the contraction with the help of the streptomarginal segments. There is a vein called vena zygous vein, which is the right branch and the left branch. The right branch is present on the ventral side of superior vena cava, which is the location of SA node as well. While the right br- left branch drains the blood into the coronary sinus. There is also an intravenous tubercle, which is a tissue present on the cranial vena cava on the ventral side. So for uh, further moving on to the ligaments of heart, so firstly I am going to explain about Butali's ligament. This is Butali's ligament, which is present in the base region of heart, and its exact location is that it is present between pulmonary trunk and aorta. It is also called arteriosome. Then further moving on to sternopericardial uh, ligament. From the name, we can uh, simply say that sternopericardial ligament is present at the apex region, and 
also present in the region of sternum. These are the vessels in the base of the heart. This one is the aorta. Aorta has aortic arch, which gives the two types of origination. The one to the brachiocephalic trunk, another one to the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk has two types of arteries: the left and right pulmonary arteries, and which take the deoxygenated blood. And this one is the brachiocephalic uh, trunk, which has the two subclavian arteries and two common carotid arteries. The two subclavian arteries take the supplies blood to the uh, arm and also contribute towards the head, while the common carotid arteries only supplies blood to the head and neck. Also, at the right surface of heart, we have also foramen and ovulus. So, what is the function of foramen and ovulus? Foramen and ovulus is the fetal remnant which helps in the function of lungs. And in the adult age, it just becomes a prominence or identification. So, for the basic overview of conducting system of heart, so conducting system has four specialized structures. The first one is called SA node. SA node is also called the pacemaker of heart, which maintains the contraction and relaxation of heart. The second one we have AV node, and the third one we have bundle of fist, and at the fourth one we have Purkinje fibers. This was all about the overview on the heart.